Okay, today we're going to make some DNA and to start with we'll need a model of a cylinder. These are just exported from Blender. Just using fairly low geometry and we're also going to need a icosphere which is now stuck behind that. We just drop that off, you can see it. And we want to eventually color these. So let's stick in a color. We'll colorize them. Oh, we can see them both. And we want to scale this cylinder and we'll, we'll, we'll want to scale the sphere as well. And we're going to also translate them. <clears throat> now, for the sphere, we need two of those. So let's translate it twice. And let's just bring all these together in. Well, let's do it on an iterator. Okay, so okay, so this is our basic network, and let's now scale some things. So I'm pressing Control here to move more slowly. That's scaling in X for the cylinder. Let's scale in Z for the cylinder and let's scale in Y up to say 2 and let's just make that a bit thinner say 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 okay and for the spheres we'll just scale them all together. That should, that should do for now. Now um, I can see we're going to, well let's just translate these two balls to the end. Let's just put in a translate in there and zoom out a bit. So we want to translate one ball to that end so that's plus one and this one will be minus one okay so we want to rotate this all together so what I'm going to do is insert an input of a rotate axis and let's just move those out a little bit we'll come back to those in a second so now we can spin this around as one unit. Okay. And we also want to translate it as one unit as well. Let's just cut that and paste it in here. So now we can move it around. Okay, but we don't just want to rotate it and move it randomly. We want to rotate it and translate it in a well-defined way for the DNA shape. So let's add a global as we usually do for iterations, call it iters, and let's start up with, let's say 20 of them. And then let's just scroll over and in the iterators we'll set that to globals iterations. Um, so you can see here we've now got 20. Let's move that out. So we want to, uh, let's see, what, that's not the dimension we want. Is it, that's the dimension we want, I think. Or it could be X as well. Let's, let's go for X. So we want to choose internals. 
iteration number and there we have an array now of molecules or base pairs let's scale that scale so they come closer together and then let's rotate it in a similar way using internals iteration number and scale that down Ooh, okay uh, let's offset that escape that translation to move it back into the center okay so there is not our DNA we want to go on the, on the x-axis there we go so there's our DNA okay now we want to uh, use the feature uh, the iterator frequencies to make each individual base pair bounce to the frequency that's allocated it by the iterator now unfortunately because the iterator frequency needs to be in line with the iterator we cannot set up the iterator frequencies on a global variable so it means we have to set it up on each node where we want the effect to occur which in our case we want to scale the band between the balls and we want to move the ball and we want to move the balls in the y direction and we want to scale in the y direction let's do it for this one let's do uh, source zero actually before we do that let's bring in some music window input sources Okay, so you can see these balls are already moving because we have a set up a volume on that one. But we want to do the iterator frequency ranges. Let's play see what that looks like. Okay, so they're moving across the rod according to the frequency they've been given. But we need to move them back to the end. So let's offset them. And we'll scale them back up there and now if we play it again you'll see they'll, they'll jump they're Be jumping in the wrong direction okay so let's uh, let's make that positive then and instead we'll multiply the whole thing by minus one to make it negative minus one all right, so now this side is going in the right direction, uh, but the rod is not moving with it. But before we do that, let's okay, let's do the other side. So we are choosing iterator frequencies on Y, we're going to offset them by one. And that should be enough for this side because they're going in the right direction. So now we have. Okay, but what? Okay, now we need to scale the rod in the middle accordingly. So again, we'll set that to iterator frequency ranges and we'll offset that this time by two. And they should all move together now. Okay, 
So that movement may not be the right size. Let's just tidy up here a little bit. So we want to scale all these together though. Um, so what I would do is add an expression here by frequency scale. Now that doesn't exist yet, so it's going to go orange. Let's add it. Frequency scale and for the moment we'll make that one so it doesn't change anything and then let's just copy that then and we'll paste it in here oh, edit, paste append and also in here edit paste append okay so now we can scale the effect. Oh, it's not just scaling the effect. Though. So we need to move this expression up to the iterator effect itself rather than the offset. So now you shouldn't see it moving until, well, let's just make it say do uh, double the size. All right, so now we've got full control over Okay, so now we've got our basic uh, reactive DNA we can try uh, and add some a little bit more movement to it um, and obviously one of the most interesting movements for a helix is rotation so let's add a rotation so we can ro rotate the whole helix and let's just see what that's z we don't want z that's not very interesting let's try y Ooh, that's not very interesting so i think we're going for x now um the reason this is playing, let's do it more slowly so we can see. The reason this is is because we've already translated it. We really need to translate after we do the rotate. So let's cut that rotation and paste it in before the translate. All right, so now we're rotating on the Y axis. Let's just see for the sake of argument what the Y axis. Okay, so that's the Y axis and the Z which is what you would expect okay so the, we're going for the X axis and we're going to take no source on that and we'll put an increase which will go on forever it's a little bit too fast okay Okay, I'm liking that. Um, from here on, uh, you could put m many more effects on that. You, you could, for instance, you could size the the balls. You could color the balls, the rods. You could uh, make it spin in 3D again. Um, lots of things you could do to make it much more interesting. But uh, I think this is a good place to stop here um, and leave the rest up to you. Thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah.